Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. Building wealth takes time and I'm a pretty firm believer that given enough time, anybody can build wealth. But there are certain things you can do that stack the deck in your favor, that make it easier for you to build wealth. So if you're interested in what they are, I've compiled a list of the five most important things you can do that are going to have the most impact on your wealth building journey and making that road just a little bit easier. Housing is a huge contributor to one's personal wealth. The commonly cited stat is 90% that 90% of all millionaires reach this milestone through real estate. Those are overwhelmingly high odds. Real estate has built more millionaires than pretty much any other asset class out there. And if you really wanna help yourself on your journey to millionaire status, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. Okay, maybe it won't help you on the journey, but it does really help the YouTube channel. Keep in mind, when we talk about investing in real estate, this is going to include your average everyday millionaire. Think your millionaire next door type of person, the person who's going Going to include their primary residence into their net worth. And this is where you often hear people use the term like net worth millionaire. And why I often refer to eating a sugar-free dessert as tasting like being a net worth millionaire, because it's almost there, but not quite. For the vast majority of people, their primary residence makes up a substantial portion of their net worth. As you can see, for many people, their home may represent two-thirds or even up to three-fourths of their entire net worth. And while I think home ownership is absolutely wonderful, I do like to add the caveat that having a home is not a replacement for saving and investing for your future. Owning a home is one piece of your portfolio. You still want to be saving and investing because having a home doesn't give you easy access for cash to draw on. That's what your investments are for. It's also worth noting that according to the Federal Reserve, the typical net worth of a homeowner is almost 40 times greater than that of a renter. So there is great value in owning a home. And in a way, home ownership is kind of like having a forced savings account. Every single month when you make your payment on your mortgage, a portion of that goes towards the interest on your loan and a portion of that payment goes towards building equity in that home. In the early years, you're paying a larger percentage of that payment towards interest. In the later years, you're paying a greater percentage toward the principal, towards owning that home outright. And hopefully there comes a day when your home is completely paid off, when you own your home outright, and freeing yourself of a mortgage greatly reduces your cost of living. For someone who's currently paying rent or in the process of paying down a mortgage, your housing expenses can easily be 30% or more of your budget. But once that home is paid off, perhaps your housing expenses drop to say, 10% of your budget. So not only does having a home force you to set aside some money or save some money, real estate over time does tend to appreciate in value. And as your home increases in value, that brings up your net worth. And according to the latest data from the Federal Reserve, the average homeowner is now worth $1.5 million. Quick note here, averages are greatly influenced by those at the upper end of the spectrum. So in this case, those with an incredibly high net worth think billionaires. So that number is definitely skewed upwards. Home ownership played a pivotal role in the financial surge of American households. In 2022, nearly two out of every three American families were homeowners. Rising home values significantly contributed to the overall increase in household wealth during this period. Home values have surged in the past decade. In 2013, the typical home sold was about $260,000. Today, the typical home sells for about $431,000. And if you had a home that followed this trajectory, in the past decade alone, that would have increased your net worth by $170,000. That's $17,000 a year. That's absolutely a fast track to building your net worth. Having access to investments is pinnacle to wealth creation. Now we do live in a time where getting started investing has never been easier. You can probably open up a brokerage account or an IRA in under 10 minutes flat, and you can get started with incredibly small amounts. Companies like Fidelity allow you to get started with no minimums whatsoever. But if you work for a company that offers a retirement plan like the 401k, and not only that, but they also offer a matching contribution, you significantly increase your odds of becoming wealthy. In fact, the 401k has built more millionaires than any 
any other account type out there. In the Ramsey Millionaire Study, 8 out of 10 millionaires said that they invested in their company's 401k, and they specifically cited that account as one of the primary reasons they were able to reach millionaire status. Let's consider someone that makes $75,000 a year. They work for a company that offers a dollar for dollar match up to 4% on their 401k. So if they put $3,000 into this account, their company will match another $3,000. Over the course of a 40 year career, that employer match alone, if stayed consistent at $3,000 a year, could grow to over $900,000. That's $900,000 you would not have had if you invested in any other vehicle outside of the 401k. This also illustrates the power of an employer match and you never want to pass up free money. So if you work for an employer who offers a free matching contribution, you want to make sure you're contributing at least up to this match so you are capturing that money. And technically speaking, if your employer does offer a matching contribution, that's part of your compensation. So you want to make sure to capture it. So if you work for an employer that has a retirement account that offers a matching contribution, that is an incredible asset to use on your road to wealth creation. Plain and simple, married people tend to have higher net worths than single individuals. At every single age, married couples have a higher net worth than single individuals. And this makes sense. It's far easier for two people to build wealth than it is a single individual. And if you couple up with someone, you now have a dual income household. But just because you have a dual income household doesn't mean you have dual expenses. For instance, you likely end up splitting the costs, especially on big things like housing. And this simply makes life more affordable and it makes it easier to build wealth. But there really are a lot of financial benefits to marriage that extend beyond just cost sharing. Think about tax breaks. The tax credits and deductions for married couples is often and greater than it is for single individuals. What about insurance benefits? Odds are one of the two household workers would have access to an employer-sponsored insurance plan, and this is going to greatly reduce premiums. And even if you do have to buy insurance in the marketplace, whether that's health insurance, homeowner's insurance, or auto insurance, your premiums are going to be less if you're married. Even if one spouse doesn't bring in an income, there are still financial benefits at play for married couples. For instance, the stay-at-home spouse can open up a spousal IRA and still save and invest for their future. There's also social security benefits that come into play for married couples at various times. A study of 90,000 individuals in the UK found that how you view money and your perspective on money has a direct impact on wealth creation. Specifically, those who regarded money as a way of providing security accumulated more wealth than those who considered money to be a way to gain freedom, or power, or to demonstrate love. Those who tend to relate money to security tend to be a little bit more risk averse. They tend to be a little bit more cautious. And interestingly enough, those who relate money to security tend to have homes that represent an overall lower proportion of their overall net worth compared to those who look at money as equating to freedom. And I think this really equates to looking at money as having a safety net, having cash on hand to cover whatever comes your way. I definitely fall into this camp. I save and invest so I can reduce on uncertainty in my future. And while this mindset is a great asset when it comes to building wealth, there comes a time when it can actually work against you. When it comes time to shift from being a saver to being a spender, it can represent a little bit of a hurdle because you don't want to save so much that you end up making too many sacrifices today. And there have definitely been times when I'm guilty of this. Unsurprisingly, income is also strongly correlated with wealth creation. The higher your income, the easier it is to build wealth. But it also comes down to money management because a high income doesn't automatically translate into a high net worth. If you increase your income, but you also increase your spending, well, then you're not going to have anything left to show for it. And there's plenty of real world examples of people who do this. Their income increases exponentially, but so too does their spending, and they're not really left with a net benefit. But if you can nail down the specifics of money management and live within your means, working to increase your income will absolutely make it easier for you to build wealth over time. And I think a lot of this comes down to just not settling, not getting stagnant in your career, employing that growth mindset. So you're continually expanding on your skill set, lining yourself up for that next promotion or that next career jump. If you can nail down these five things, your odds of becoming wealthy increase exponentially. Which one or ones do you think is most important? Or are there any that you would add to the list. Leave it in a comment down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon. Bye.